at this point, we're now ready to put the demon seed onto a connector. And uh, once again, we're going to solder here. This is going to be just four solder contact points, so much easier than the pogo jig. Now you can program this with the pogo jig after it's already on the connector. I just recommend doing the programming before because what will sometimes happen is your solder will kind of soak through these holes and you won't have anything for the pogo jig to bite into, which you can still program with it, it's just not as easy because it'll slip around a bit. So I'm gonna take our connector here and our demon seed. So there is a very specific orientation you're gonna wanna use. You put it backwards, uh, it's not gonna work. You might break something. So the pinouts are right here. So you get the ground, D plus, D minus, voltage. So with the connectors I supplied, the ground, it's gonna be over here. It's real easy. The demon goes on the inside. I know it might be easy to look at these connectors and think it should actually go the other way, but these solder pads double as connection points for the cable, which comes later. So we're gonna solder this up and these pads will still be sticking out. We're gonna tin these to make this process easier. So tinning is just applying solder to your contact points in advance. So we're gonna tin it first, and then we're gonna only join one of the pads to make sure the board is properly positioned and it's gonna fit inside the plug before you lock down the other three pads. All right, so let's get out our soldering iron and set it to 400 Celsius again. Uh, again, we're gonna to wanna to move quickly here. There are a few reasons for this. Uh, first reason, you're gonna melt the plastic around the USB connector if you're not careful. Second reason is you're gonna cause potential heat damage to the AT Tiny if you sit there for too long. And the third is that the flux burns off pretty quickly. You want to get all of your solder work done while the flux is still in its liquid form. Once it's gone, you start having flow issues with your solder. Now we're gonna tin the connector and the demon seed board first. Now tinning is simply just applying a thin coating of solder to the surface. When tinning the USB connector, we're gonna wanna watch out for overfilling these channels. We want it either flush with the top or below that. Uh, if you put too much solder, it's gonna cause that board to sit too high, then you'll have problems fitting into the connector later on. So I'm gonna use some double-sided tape here. It allows better accuracy when we get to the point of joining the board to the connector. If you wanna use your blue tack or whatever for the tinning process, it's totally fine. So what you'll see I'm doing here is I apply a small dot of solder to the end of the connector and then I use my iron to kind of reflow and push the solder down through the rest of the channel. This helps prevent overfilling these channels. And here you see, if we look down the side, that nothing is bulging over the tops here. Demon Seaboard. board. Now for this, I'm gonna put a little dot down and then just rub it around. That keeps the amount of solder on these pads very minimal. As long as we're quick, it's gonna be real easy to do. Requires that the flux is still there, so you gotta do it quickly. And as you can see, we tilt it to the side, barely perceptible amount of solder here. Now again, this is what it's supposed to look like. Nice and square with the rest of the connector in the left. And on the right, we're gonna see that the board is parallel with the rest of the connector, but also the surface of the board is no higher than the rest of the connector. Now here's a uh, cross section of the connector from the top down. And you can see there's some ridges inside of the plastic shell. That's gonna be to act as a stop for the metal edges of the connector itself. And here's a side cross section. And it's nice and parallel with the connector because below the board, we want some space down there for the wires that will eventually come in. 
Now, if you look at these connectors, they're gonna have these little notches that are raised up over here. What happens is if you put the board on top of those notches, the board is really close to being too high. And I'll show you a little bit more about that later. So this is where the double-sided tape becomes very valuable with something like blue tack it's hard to get a nice flat surface that you're sticking to which makes it hard to ensure the board is no higher than the rest of the connector so let's put this connector down kind of upside down and then we're going to slide the board in underneath it push down on that connector to make sure that your board isn't pushing it up and you're going to see that it stops on those notches and if you look on the right side here you're gonna see that it's stopped. There's that little gap. That's the size of the notches. And then I use the tweezers to push each side in to make sure we're not hanging out the left or the right side. Now let's look at that from the top view. So again, keeping the board parallel with the table, slide it in. The board will naturally stop against those notches, which means we're at the right depth. And then we check that the left side and right side are not sticking out. And then if you look closely here, you're gonna see the metal, the four metal contacts of the connector. They should line up just right with the solder pads on the board. So that's a, a great way to ensure that everything is really lined up. Once you have that, we can go and solder one of these connectors. Only do one. And then we're gonna go check the fitment. If it doesn't fit right, it's way easier to undo one solder point. I'm gonna do these the way most people first do these boards that I've seen, which is they apply the soldering iron directly to the pad, but they miss touching the metal on the connector itself, which means you get a cold solder joint, which means you don't get a connection. So what you'll see is that when you move the board, the connector doesn't move with it. That means we definitely don't have a connection here. This is an extremely easy fix. Now, you don't even need to add more solder. Just slide forward and touch that connector. The solder that you've already put down should just flow into there and create that nice web. And once again, here it is from the top. And again, this is what it should look like. Nice and square on the left parallel with the rest of the connector on the right. Now, stop at that one connection, and let's see if it fits the plastic shell. Now, word of warning, if you push this connector all the way into the shell, it's gonna be very hard to get back out. We wanna stop before these little notches on the side touch the plastic. Once they're in there, they kinda hook in, and it's gonna be not impossible, but pretty difficult to pull out. So remember, there's some ridges inside this plastic connector. So you might have to wiggle everything back and forth a little bit, up and down, left and right, to fully insert the, uh, the assembly here. And once the board itself, the Demon Seed board, has fully cleared the edge of the plastic, pretty much uh, guaranteed to have a fit here, and you're good. Now, if everything is good, Let's go and connect the remaining three pads to the connector. So those two middle ones are very close together, so it's kind of easy to bridge them. This is a real good point to get out your multimeter, just like prior episodes, and do a continuity test to ensure that we have not created any accidental solder bridges between the four lines. So that's it for this one. Next episode, we will put a payload onto this assembled connector. <laughs> <laughs>